You may be familiar with the concept of intelligence, and although not everyone agrees on the exact definition, it's usually considered to be your level of general mental ability. However, some people disagree with the idea that intelligence is considered to be a singular, be-all and end-all measure, and propose that there are in fact multiple different kinds of intelligences, and that they're all completely unrelated. But does the evidence support this conclusion? It's time for a reality check. When you talk about intelligence in the world of research, you usually talk about it in terms of um, IQ scores, or in terms of what's called the G factor, which is kind of an extracted summary variable of someone's performance in a series of cognitive tests. These tests normally look at your ability to complete complex mental tasks, such as this one, where you have to figure out which of the shapes below are identical to the standard shape presented above by rotating them in your head. Or tasks where you're asked horrible questions like this and have to use logical reasoning to come to the correct answer. There will usually be a lot of other kinds of tasks, such as figuring out which number comes next in a sequence, or sometimes even things like how many different words you can think of that fit into a certain category. The whole point of these tests is, to put it bluntly, to measure how smart you are. The distribution of IQ scores normally looks like this, with most people being close to the average of 100, and the further away you get from the average score, the fewer people you'll find with that high or low an IQ. As for the G factor, it's much more of a statistical thing, in that rather than just their score on a test, you measure how someone answered the questions and calculate the underlying common factor in their answers using statistics mumbo-jumbo. But essentially, all the tests of your mental ability will point towards one common factor, the G factor. Now, some of you might be skeptical about whether or not such tests can actually distinguish between smart and not-so-smart people. But I'm sure most people would agree that people who get good grades at school are smart, right? Well, a massive meta-analysis, meaning a butt-ton of studies all pooled together, demonstrates an average correlation of 0.54 between people's results on intelligence tests and their grades at school, which shows that there's definitely a relationship here. For those not in the know, a correlation, much like a p-value, ranges from between 0 and 1, but measures the relationship between two variables. I'll make another video at some point going into more detail. I could go on and on about all the things that your scores on intelligence tests are related to, like your income, health, and even your likelihood of committing crime. But that's not what we're here for. We're here because we want to know if there are multiple different kinds of intelligences that are separate from one another. One of the best examples of this idea is Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. This theory rejects the idea that intelligence is a singular general ability, and instead proposes that there are a bunch of different intelligences that are all very weakly related to one another, if at all, and that people can be high in some and low in others. He initially suggested seven different kinds of intelligence, these being, in no particular order, logical mathematical intelligence, basically how good you are at logical reasoning and how good you are with numbers, linguistic intelligence, being good with words and sensitive to the sounds and rhythms of language, musical intelligence, how good you are at appreciating rhythm and pitch, essentially being good with music, spatial intelligence, having good spatial and visual skills, bodily kinesthetic intelligence, how good you are at controlling your body and handling objects skillfully, interpersonal intelligence, how good you are with people in terms of responding well to their emotions and behavior, etc., and intrapersonal intelligence, how good you are at self-reflection and awareness of your own feelings and abilities. Now, you'll often hear people trying to sling other intelligences in there, like naturalistic intelligence or spiritual intelligence, but Howard Gardner never concretely added these to his theory, so we won't count them. You may be thinking, 
where does this list come from? How did good old Howard decide what makes something an intelligence and what doesn't? Well, he didn't just pull these intelligences out of a hat. He did have criteria to decide what is and isn't an intelligence. These being the capacity for that ability to be impaired in isolation by damage to a specific portion of the brain, and the existence of savants, or mentally handicapped individuals who are exceptionally talented in that area. There are more, but what's important here is not how the intelligences were conceptualized, but whether or not they stand up to scrutiny. The most important theoretical point about this theory is the idea that these separate intelligences should be relatively unrelated to one another. If they're separate, people who are high in one form of intelligence shouldn't necessarily be higher in any of the others, although Gardner did state that a small amount of overlap would be okay. It's worth pointing out that Gardner never developed ways for people to be tested on each of these intelligences, so he never even really tested his own theory. Nor did he come up with a way for other people to test it. Thankfully, some smart individuals have done this work for us, so let's see how well the theory stacks up against the evidence. A piece of research was conducted that directly tested the idea that multiple separate intelligences exist, according to Gardner's theory. The researchers found tests that are capable of assessing people on each of these seven proposed intelligences. Most of the tests they used have a good track record, and seem to be a theoretical match for the type of intelligence they're supposed to be testing. For example, one of the logical mathematical tests measured how quickly and accurately participants could complete simple maths problems, like subtraction and multiplication. And for one of the linguistic tests, participants would be given a word, and then they'd have to choose which of four other words had the most similar meaning. Now, some of the tests produced results which we'd call unreliable, which again is a statistical concept that I'll have to make another video about at some point, but for now it just means that those tests didn't seem to be consistently measuring the same thing. Both of the tests for musical intelligence produced pretty unreliable results, so I wouldn't take any test for those seriously. All the other intelligences had at least one test that was pretty reliable, with the exception of maybe intrapersonal intelligence, since one of the tests for that had mediocre reliability, and for the other test, reliability was irrelevant, since it was just looking at how well participants could predict their scores on all the other tests, in order to assess their understanding of their own abilities, which is a core part of intrapersonal intelligence. Each participant took all the tests for each separate intelligence to see if their results on some tests were at all related to their results on others. Now, before I get to the results, remember, if Gardner's theory is correct, then people's scores on all these different tests should be relatively unrelated to one another. And they especially should not be related to the G factor, which is a measure of general intelligence, which is something that cannot exist in tandem with multiple intelligences, since the ideas contradict each other. So, for the sake of transparency, the correlations and estimations of significance I'm going to show you here won't match those found in the paper, since there were multiple tests for each intelligence domain, so I'll be showing you the average correlations between all the tests on one domain and all the tests on another. Here we go. Linguistic intelligence was significantly correlated with three other intelligences. Spatial intelligence was significantly correlated with two other intelligences. Logical mathematical intelligence was significantly correlated with three other intelligences. Interpersonal intelligence was significantly correlated with four other intelligences. Intrapersonal intelligence with two. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence with zero and musical intelligence was also not significantly correlated with any of the others, but again, the results for the tests of musical intelligence shouldn't really be trusted due to their unreliability. So, what are we seeing here? It looks like a lot of these supposedly independent intelligences are actually related to one another. Now, I'm not saying these correlations are huge, most of them are medium at best, but the key takeaway here is that they're related. Simply put, 
Performance on tests for one kind of intelligence can help predict your results on others. If these tests were all measuring completely unrelated kinds of intelligences, this should be impossible. But that's not the most interesting part. All the participants were also given a test of general intelligence as well, so that the G factor for each individual could be extracted. How much are each of these tests related to a measure of general intelligence? Let's take a look. As you can see, the G factor was significantly related to five out of the seven intelligences described by Gardner. Again, we can't really trust the musical intelligence results, so ignore that. The fact that test results for so many of these supposedly different kinds of intelligence correlate pretty well in some cases, with a measure of general intelligence, suggests that they're all measuring something pretty similar, which again, shouldn't be the case if there's no such thing as general intelligence. Now, you may have noticed that bodily kinesthetic intelligence seems to be completely unrelated to all the other tests and the G factor. You could take this to mean that bodily kinesthetic skills do in fact represent a different kind of intelligence, but the real problem with this is that the skills and abilities described by this intelligence domain would be the kinds of things that gymnasts and skilled sports players are good at, such as fine motor control and balance, and these things don't really reflect what we generally think of as intelligence. You could either argue that such motor imbalance skills are completely different from intelligence, or you could call them a separate kind of intelligence. But then you have to play the word game of what is intelligence? Is facial recognition a kind of intelligence? Is reaction time a kind of intelligence? What about color perception and running speed? Intelligence is supposed to refer to our cognitive capabilities, so if you want to classify something as intelligence, it shouldn't describe things that don't fall under mental abilities. Also, the way musical skills relate to intelligence is still a bit of a mystery to me. The measures of musical ability in this study can't be trusted, and I wasn't able to find any other studies that looked at inherent musical ability and intelligence in the same people, so your guess is as good as mine. So, what do you think? Does the fact that a lot of Gardner's separate intelligences are actually related to each other discredit his theory? Or do you think he might be onto something after all? You decide. If you think I've made any mistakes in this video, or know of any good counter-research, let me know in the comments. Or send me a message. We'll talk about it. Just you and me. And in case you're still thinking everyone can be intelligent in their own way, I'm sorry.